The Gateway to Mars, also known as the SpaceX Starship, is, rather unsurprisingly, coming along with a whole host of changes to the concept of rocket launches. With four test flights under its belt, and a fifth expected very soon, things are certainly heating up at Starbase, and we can't wait to see what happens next. In today's video, we're taking a closer look at the new developments at SpaceX ahead of Test Flight 5, including changes to the ship itself, support structures, and other related facilities. Attention all operators on countdown one, this is the final go-no-go no go poll for Starship Flight 4. Stage one. Go. Stage two. Go. Stage five, two. Go. Flight directors, go for launch. We have the Back in June, SpaceX made history with the success of Starship Test Flight 4. Ship 29 managed to complete an orbital energy trajectory before a successful splashdown in the Indian Ocean. Unfortunately, the ship suffered some minor heat damage during atmospheric re-entry and one of the forward flaps was almost entirely broken off. Super Heavy Booster 11, meanwhile, successfully detached from the ship, reoriented itself and completed a virtual tower landing in the Gulf of Mexico. The booster's vertical splashdown, in particular, was the most exciting outcome because it indicated that the boosters were ready to attempt terrestrial vertical landings. Never one to over-celebrate a milestone, SpaceX Chief Elon Elon Musk has already shifted his sights to Test Flight 5. According to him, the next Starship test flight is penciled in for the first half of August, subject to SpaceX's preparation and approval by regulatory bodies like the Federal Aviation Administration (FAA). However, given the relative lack of bad news from Flight 4, the FAA is not expected to delay SpaceX's launch license. One factor that has delayed some progress is Hurricane Beryl, the raging storm that has been making major headlines lately. Given these delays, Delays, Starship Test Flight 5 is expected to take place in mid-August at the earliest. The next test flight will likely be the most ambitious yet. This time, instead of a virtual tower landing in the ocean, Musk and company will attempt to land the Starship's booster stage back onto the orbital launch pad. If this succeeds, then Starship will have taken a massive step towards proving its reusability and potential for round-trip missions to the Moon or even Mars. So, just how is SpaceX preparing for this exciting new flight and the future beyond? Well, in several ways. One of the first things keen-eyed followers of Starbase activity have noticed are the works on and around Orbital Launch Pad A, OLPA. OLPA's support arms, more commonly referred to as chopsticks, have been repaired and upgraded in the last couple of weeks. This is doubtlessly part of the preparation for Flight 5's anticipated vertical landing on the launch pad, where the chopsticks will have the critical role of holding the descended booster stage in place. Starbase's tank farm evolution also continues. The vertical tank farm of old is being replaced by horizontal prefabricated tanks. This new layout allows the tank farm to support the existing OLPA and the upcoming OLPB. Even more importantly, the horizontal layout will hopefully prevent damage from rockets launching on the nearby launch pads. The old tanks had suffered some major damage and denting from the blast-off forces, something that could have led to a disaster of untold proportions. Ship 30 which will star in the next integrated flight test, has also been spotted undergoing mission prep. Glimpses of heat shield installation have revealed that the ship has been fitted with stronger tiles and a new ablative material. The sections of the rocket housing the propellant tanks are now fitted with extra protection in the form of four heat shield layers, including a pyron layer backup for the primary heat shield. Above the pyron are two layers of mesh and felt blankets that insulate the section and make attaching tiles much easier. Instead of hammering tile pins into the metal shell, the pins are stuck into the felt. The tile layer has also been improved upon through the use of new gap fillers on high stress points like the nose cone and flaps. Chief among these filling aids are RTV silicone adhesive and stainless steel tape. The adhesive has a tough reputation and with a melting point of 650 degrees Fahrenheit, re-entry burn-ups just might be a thing of the past for the Starship. The flaps have also seen the introduction of Pyron to help them withstand the heat of atmospheric re-entry and, hopefully, not suffer damage next time around. Super Heavy Booster 12, on the other hand, has been rolled out of Mega Bay 1 for its highly anticipated cryo test and static fire. The testing, which had also been threatened by Beryl, luckily went ahead during the pre-planned July 9th to 11 road closures. All eyes were on the 33 wrap 
Raptor engines during the test, and SpaceX appeared to have ironed out the problem that resulted in one of them shutting off during test flight 4. The engines are just as, if not more, important for coming down as they are for going up. With SpaceX planning the first ever terrestrial vertical landing in space travel history, the engines cannot fail. But at least we can say so far, so good for Booster 12. All that remains now is for Ship 30 to be stacked on top for the first time. While OLP-A will be used in the next test flight and continue to be worked on, its long-term future has a massive question mark beside it. Simple wear and tear means the overall structure is starting to get shaky and may soon be unsuitable for launches. That's why OLP-B has been a site of continuous activity this year. SpaceX is attempting a whole new design for its upcoming launch pad and, like with its ships, reusability is front and center. The tower components, including Tower Module 1, have been brought to the OLPB site but are yet to be stacked. The cryogenic propellant lines are in place though, meaning it won't be long before we see Starbase's new launch platform standing tall and proud. SpaceX has expressed to the FAA that it hopes the tower will be up by mid-August. Hurricane Beryl was initially believed to be the cause of the stacking delays, but now the issue is uncertain. Online forum speculators theorize anything from Musk toying with space fans to issues improving the dreaded quick disconnect QD system. Basically, the QD system manages the connection between a rocket and the propellant tank farm that fuels it. Pretty much every Starship test flight so far has had significant delays or even aborts because of QD problems. In fact, engineers have been working on OLPA's QD system for quite a while now, a common and frustrating sight for those in search of some rocket action. The new orbital launch pad will be a concrete-filled steel structure that is a significant upgrade to the all-concrete and rebar-based design the OLPA has. This makes OLPB much better suited for longevity and higher stress. After all, SpaceX is planning on sending humans and heavy cargo to space and all that added weight will require even more launch power. Hopefully, a more unshakable structure would better protect intricate components like the QD system. OLPB was also designed to be taller than OLPA since Starship fuel demands may necessitate taller rockets. It is not certain what OLPB's first flight will be, but we can wager that it will send its first rocket into space before the year is up. That brings brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching and we hope you keep it locked onto your favorite space travel channel. Make sure to like the video and smash the big red subscribe button as this goes a long way towards growing the channel. Feel free to comment your thoughts and suggestions below because we'd love to hear from you. Until next time.